Good evening. Welcome to another edition of Cooking with Lily and Generoso. I am Generoso. I'm Lily. Yes. And tonight we are making one of Lily's favorites, which brings us great joy. It's ungodly late on a Saturday evening, so it's a perfect time for the high fat content of risotto. And the way we make it here in the Fierro household. It's incredibly bad for you. We're very proud of this. As all good things are. As all good things are. Let's look at the culprits. Ingredients. You will need a ladle. You will need a knife. You will need two sticks of butter. Unsalted. Uh, unsalted. About five to six cloves of garlic. A nice hunk of goat cheese. A spring onion. We were lucky to find these this week in the wonderful land of Haymarket. A couple of portobello mushrooms. Two cups of arborio rice, and that's the rice you want to use, is arborio rice. And you can find it. Every supermarket has at least one company's arborio rice, no matter what part of the country you're in. So don't use another kind of rice. It will not make and it's sense. It's a short green rice, right? Mm -hmm. Very creamy. Um, unlike, let's say, like jasmine rice, which kind of stays somewhat separate and doesn't clump. It does, I don't know. It just doesn't have the creaminess of the risotto. Uh, we're gonna need any white wine will do. We'll need about a half a glass, a uh, half a cup to deglaze. Olive oil, some vegetable stock. You could use chicken stock if you want, but you know, I think the vegetable stock doesn't have the, the kind of intense character, especially if you want to play around with your, your consomme black pepper, and we're going to use some salt somewhere down the road. So, uh, we're going to do our prep work, and we'll be right back with the second stage of risotto. So now, we have prepped the garlic that Lily has wonderfully minced. It's right here, next to the portobello mushroom that I have chopped up, and next to the spring onion as well, which I have minced up rather nicely. So now we're going to make what is known as a sofrito. So, this is basically the that of your risotto, and I mean this sincerely, folks. This is one of those things that if you don't want to do it right, don't do it. You make a low-fat version of the risotto, you might as well just die. And I really genuinely mean this, like make it for real. Don't eat a ton of it, but don't skimp and don't play around. So this is what we're gonna do. We are going to turn our wonderful frying pan, deep dish pan, on medium. We're going to take our sticks of butter. Mm, butter. And what we're doing here is we're creating like the fat base. And uh, this is not pleasant. There's going to be more fat involved in this, folks. So just get used to it. One stick of butter. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And I'll be a little nice. Not two sticks. Stick and a half. <laughs> Which I think is completely acceptable. This is going to be melting down for a little tiny bit. And what we're going to be doing with this is we're going to be creating the base. The sofito is the base of all this. And eventually we're going to toast all the risotto in this wonderful base. And uh, we'll be back in just a second to show you the next steps. Okay, so it's just been a couple of minutes. All of our butter is almost completely melted. Mm -hmm. We've also taken the entire container, four cups of vegetable stock and poured it in here. Yep. Added a little tiny bit of water, maybe one cup added to that, and that's going to be our consomme, and that's going to come into play in a little bit. While the butter is now melted, we are going to add our wonderful garlic. And our onions. And our mushrooms. Now we're making, amazingly enough in this house, a pretty much a vegetarian, though heavily relying on animal product, risotto. Um, but invariably, this is going to be the base of your risotto. So the question becomes, well, suppose I want to make seafood the risotto. Suppose I want to make asparagus the risotto. Anything you want to make a risotto. In the sofrito is the base, and this is where you're going to be doing it. So the green onion and the, 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 the portobello mushroom and the butter is going to stir together. I'm going to add about maybe a tablespoon of pepper. Yum. And we are now going to stir this up a little tiny bit. And we're going to just let it like very, very lightly brown because what's going to happen next is adding the character of the dish and that's going to be the actual arborio rice to this fat content and you will see the next steps in just a moment. So, this sofrito has been cooking for about five minutes 
it's browned up, but most importantly, it's flavored the butter with the spring onion and the portobello mushroom and the pepper and the little tiny bit of salt I put into it. And garlic. And garlic. So I'm now going to take out not all, but some of the vegetables with my slotted spoon, keeping all that wonderful fat in there because we did all of this for the fat. And so we'll take a little bit of it out, leave a little tiny bit in there for flavor, but obviously keeping as much of the butter content as possible. Don't worry, those mushrooms will not go to waste. Yes, you're not throwing them away. You're just taking them and putting them to the side for a moment. We are now going to add all two cups of our arborio rice. And what we're going to do here is we're going to basically toast our, our rice. And we're going to make it nice and crunchy and get all that fat into the rice. <laughs> that's what we want. We want that fat in the rice to collect amongst themselves and talk to each other and get all in there. And we're going to cook this down for about another minute or so. And then we're going to start slowly, and I mean slowly, folks, ladling in our vegetable stock. One ladle at a time, stir, and you'll see the process in just a moment. So let's take a look at what's happening with the, with the toasting. So it's been mixing in with this butter concoction with a little bit of the mushrooms and the garlic and the spring onions, and it's nice and brown. It's toasted on the ends, and it looks really fantastic. So. At this stage, we are going to introduce the vegetable broth. So, this is what I mean. A lot of folks are like, well, why don't you just add all of the vegetable broth and let it cook down like you would regular rice? What happens is you don't get the kind of authentic consistency you want out of the risotto. So, this means, and it is painstaking, that you're going to have to add it one ladle at a time. And I want to show you this, and I'm actually going to run the process properly. So, one ladle into the continent, into the uh, concoction. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is take our spatula and we're gonna move this around until it dissipates. It'll be pretty quick. It's fairly hot. So the risotto soaks it all up. Soaks it all up. Gets in nice. Does that look good to you, Lily? Looks beautiful. All right then. Scoop number two. So you're essentially looking for like the um, deposit of water to disappear. Absolutely. So you don't want to see it remotely look like soup. You want it to tighten up. You want the rice. You want to move it around. Obviously, continue to move it around. Because no one wants a burnt risotto. Absolutely. And you want to wait until the water pretty much dissipates. And we're going to continue to do this until all of our vegetable stock has been expended. Mm. All right, we got a nice dry up though. Ladle number three. And you don't have to keep track. I'm just actually kidding on the numbers here. But you just want to keep adding the ladles of vegetable broth until they dissipate, until you run out. And then you want to taste your rice. And when your rice starts to taste al dente, a little firm in the middle, soft on the outside, then you're ready for the next step. So we're going to continue this process and be back when we're ready to go to the next phase of our risotto. So it's been about 20 minutes. And if you can see, our pot of vegetable broth is, is empty. So we've added every ladle possible. And I'm going to taste it. I've been tasting it about every five minutes just to see the consistency. And as Lily will probably attest when she tastes it, it's perfectly al dente. It's not crunchy at all in the middle. It's still very, very firm. So now I'm going to take a nice little bottle of white wine. What do we got here? Another grachetto. And we're just going to deglaze a little tiny bit. About a half a cup. Add it to the risotto. Beautiful. And we're going to use that and just cook that down the same way we've been cooking down our vegetable broth. That's going to add a lot of character to the risotto. Tiny bit of acidity and a little bit of richness, right? Absolutely. Really, really nice taste. It's going to make the risotto pop just a little tiny bit more. Let that cook down. 
and we're going to reintroduce their vegetables from earlier in the video. And again, even though the butter has been flavored with these, adding the vegetables back, then you may wonder why do we take them out? We don't want to really treat the vegetables that way for the entire 20-25 minute process and break them down that way. This is breaking down beautifully and all that flavor is added and then when our wine is almost completely deglazed and dissipated we're going to add our friend the goat cheese. Now because I love you and that is you Lily and you people watching out there I'm just going to put in a half of the piece that we had earlier and melt that into the formula and once that's all melted down, we will get ready to plate. Yum. So we've taken our risotto off the flame, let it cool for about five minutes, and have plated as such. I know some people like to put Parmesan on top of it. I think it's fine just the way it is. Taste those spring onions and portobello mushrooms and garlic and butter, because this is your risotto. I hope you enjoy it. Yay!